let's talk about some basics of the submarine cable, although I was mentioning some of them. It's also called subsea, undersea cable, and of course, using the fiber infrastructure, these are all fiber, and currently around 430 of them, excluding retired ones. So after 25 years, etc., they are not used anymore. Yeah, cables, uh, since generally, as I said, four, eight uh, fiber pairs, not really, not really um, thick cables, especially in the uh, very depth sea, they are very, very uh, thin because you don't need much protection. But once you come to the shore, okay, closer to the shore, the beach, okay, you need more protection because humans are crazy. So they can damage the cable. So there are uh, even even uh, double double armored cables. Uh, you might check on the Google. You uh, you can see. So protection increases on the fiber, those uh, steel uh, etc. On top of those uh, fiber, you will see closer to the beach, and almost more than one million kilometer or sub submarine cable laid in the world. By the way, it's so many. As I said, four. 430 submarine cables and some of these cables basically guys is uh, more than 20,000 kilometers they are going through and lots of if I think I have let me see if I don't have I will I will explain no worries they are passing through multiple countries let's say if you are deploying a um, cable between the Europe and let's say Egypt okay it can pass through multiple country and let's say I want to, as a company or government, I want to just be uh, on that fiber ca submarine cable system as well. And what I do, I can uh, pay the money and from that cable, okay, from that cable, it's called branch unit, basically to my cable landing station, they will extend the fiber. So the one fiber can touch 10, 15, 20 countries and connect those countries together. Okay, I think I have some pictures. And some fiber cables are really short and some uh, very long, like 20,000 kilometers. And imagine now, uh, over this 20,000 kilometers, 000, so end to end, around 100 millisecond latency you would see. Yeah, major routes is very important, right? If, let's say, uh, between, I, I was giving also example here, between two countries, if there is not much traffic, why then uh, you will even deploy the fiber system or there, etc. Because we were talking about this uh, content network in, in the beginning, right? So most of the content still originated by the United States, although architecture are, architectures now is changing. Because why? Okay, YouTube and uh, you know Google and all the Facebook, uh, Akamai, all those guys bringing content closer to the user, which mean I am, let's say in the, um, I am in Iran, okay? And my ISP already has Google, YouTube, Akamai, all those content. So, it, and for end user, for me, if I need to reach Facebook and my ISP has the Facebook caches already deployed there, they will not utilize their submarine cable, their terrestrial cable to reach somewhere which can reach to the uh, Facebook server because Facebook already in the local ASP. Okay? But someone, let's say, uh, have not deployed CDN or not using the CDN and content in the United States only, then your Iranian ISP somehow has to reach there. Okay, your Iranian ISP might get the transit service, okay, which might get the, another transit from from the different carrier, but eventually that packet will has to be routed to the United States because they didn't bring the content to you. You need to reach to that content. For example, uh, Amazon Web Services is deploying in regions and not only in of course. Okay, so major route is important. North America is generating almost all the content all those companies coming from there. So, but at least they are placing their, uh, you know, nodes, cache engines, etc., closer to those, all those countries. So for them, the advantage, once you type Google, Google uh, will come very fast. For ISP, it is good 
to have those caches in their network directly because they will reduce the latency for their customer and they will not use their upstream bandwidth okay right maybe from the transit ip transit or maybe iplc to another country and getting ip transit from there or maybe doing peering from there lots of uh, different alternatives uh, they will reduce those up, up uplink capacity they will also for the customer they will reduce the latency so that's good and for end user it, it is also good because now they will access much faster so bringing those contents closer to the user is good for all of us they may be forced to because of latency and now data regulation or which one you put that comment i don't remember this whole idea who builds those sub submarine fiber cables now yeah now all those i was explaining you right in the beginning still they are uh, getting but not much even maybe they they started to decrease those tier one isps those 13 isps there they have fiber infrastructure in many many region actually not only united states most of them are basically united states based company but they have an operation in europe they have an operation uh, sometimes in the latin america in the middle east and they have their fiber backbone in the world all over the world that's why once they have a new market maybe they are selling their wholesale business in different country so they sell the bandwidth to someone so they need extra capacity on their international link right that's why they were building or they were uh, building together when they built together we call it consortium uh, in the consortium they were building or they they were sometimes even uh, purchasing iru right but now what we are talking about is content providers they bring their cache engine etc to closer to the user right someone needs to pay now those companies need to pay right if they bring their cache engine to iran and still their original content in the united states those content will be cached at least one time it needs to be carried to the iran so this uplink capacity somehow needs to be paid and not only those now uh, google or facebook or uh, microsoft etc is they are building the data centers all over the world right selling the cloud service and uh, for many reasons they always talk about uh east west traffic for east west traffic those data centers will talk to each other and for this internal traffic demand and also for outside the public internet to uh, bring the content closer to the user public internet content plus this space traffic data center communication all these demands actually traffic demands push those guys to build their own fibers facebook google they are doing now they are building the fibers submarine cables okay that's the idea who built this submarine cable changing Content providers, the, they also called hypergiant. They are um, building more and more cable or in the consortium generally. And who uses this submarine cable? Everyone. And yes, this lead capacity and potential, uh, potential capacity, I already talked about this. What I said, because <laughs> laying the fibers, terrestrial and submarine is not, uh, you know, the, the job you can do every year, etc. Uh, costing hundreds of millions of dollars that's why what you do you lay the fibers but some of them just dark some of them uh, you put the transmission equipment so you lead them and then the potential potential capacity is the total amount of capacity normally uh, but the lead capacity is what really you are utilizing currently and this is the end-to-end -end architecture actually and uh, i was talking in the beginning dry plant i showed you uh, beach manhole here this one as you can see submarine cables here the uh, sea and the subsea cables these are repeaters and this is branching unit which i was talking about uh, if these cables coming from here and let's say here is london and then here is let's say france paris okay then from this branching unit 
what you can do, basically, you can extend this branching unit. Actually, here it's going somewhere, but branching unit to connect to another country, another landing station. Doesn't have to be country all the time. In some uh, same country, it can touch in, uh, in multiple uh, landing station as well. Then uh, once it comes, it terminates on the beachman hole. From here to cable landing station, it comes. The, again, the fiber, all, all the communication here, fiber. Uh, here in the cable landing station, I was talking about this power to feed these repeaters. Power feeding equipment is placed here, and this fiber is terminated in the SLTE, submarine termination system, line termination equipment, it's called. It's similar to, you need to terminate somewhere, right? DSLAM, CMTS, we were talking about. SLT in the cable, uh, cable landing station, for short CLS you might uh, hear a lot. Then from this cable landing station again, this, this black is terrestrial and this uh, black also terrestrial cable of course. From the cable station, cable landing station to your POP, to your data center, etc. Another terrestrial fiber. Okay guys? And I am explaining also here those things. How is it so far? Countries have, not every country, but uh, developed country has multiple, especially it's, it, it cannot be landlocked country. They have multiple submarine uh, landing station, okay? Cable landing station. So in Saudi Arabia, for example, I think six, since there are guys in Saudi Arabia here, multiple landing station. A landing station can go down. It doesn't mean your entire uh, country internet cuts. So imagine now how your country can connect to another one. You might have uh, terrestrial cables passing through your neighbor country somewhere and then going through the internet, right? Or you might have sub sub uh, marine cable if you have uh, sea access your country then you can have also internet exit from there. You can have satellite auction as well, always. And uh, these are the, your country's internet connection to the outside world. From where the repeaters get power signal, I already explained this. Power feeding equipment will basically put the power and in the fiber I told you there is couple conductors, okay? Through those couple conductors, basically power will be reaching to those repeaters and that's it, because under the sea you don't have power, right? So there is no electricity here. So through the fiber they are getting, and to the fiber, to the fiber, this PFE, power feeding equipment, will give the power. And beach manhole, which I was talking about, from the sea, the cable comes here, and from here it can continue, it will continue to the submarine, uh, CLS, cable landing station. Yeah, the submarine cable map and the uh, television Telegeography, those two websites are uh, showing the cable map of uh, 2017. You can see the latest ones. Here, the beach manhole, another uh, picture. As you can see, from beach manhole to the, uh, this is the, from the satellite, this is pictures. Uh, there is a cable. Generally, this landing station is very close to beach manhole, of course.